Oh, You're about to hit the streets. Four out of 20 to control. Elite teams able to see something we cannot. She's right outside the market. Boat six at seven, four, six. Spotting counterfeits, the fakes on street corners behind closed doors in shopping malls across America. Do you have any weapons on you? Everything from prescription pills in your medicine cabinet. And you don't even know for sure if the ingredient's in there. And our lab tests right here tonight. What's really in those pills when the test fails? So this is not an approved drug here in America. Exactly. To some of those pharmacies with Canada in the name, promising to save you money, we go undercover. Do any of the drugs we order actually come from Canada? Is there a Canada drug store here? To the genes that say made in America. From China. To the cosmetics. What's really in that makeup? What are you truly putting on your face? I'm with 2020 and we're rolling right now. Everyone in the family. The stunning ingredients inside counterfeit Viagra. They're actually using like drywall as filler. To your children. The bike helmet sliced in half, failing the test. To the airbags in the family car. One couple stunned when we put theirs to the test. For nearly a year now, 2020, behind the scenes with the LAPD, the FBI, the L.A. Sheriff's Department. L.A. County Sheriff's Report. Homeland Security, Customs and Border Protection, 24 cities, three continents, every corner of America. And we were stunned by what we found. You could be brushing your teeth with trace amounts of antifreeze. Exactly. Good evening. Yes, antifreeze found in that toothpaste. And tonight here, you're about to see it all. The secret facility right here behind us, those counterfeit airbags and cars, one family stunned by the 2020 test. The so-called Mac makeup, what was really in it? Your children, the bike helmets, the stunning test, and even your smartphones, are they the real thing? David, you spent nearly a year investigating dangerous counterfeits in every corner of your home, even your medicine cabinet. So many of us in search of cheaper medicine. Those signs for Canada drugs, are they really from Canada? And what are the real ingredients? And so tonight, it all unravels right before your eyes, starting with everyday prescription medications, dangerous and counterfeit, and hiding in plain sight. On this morning, 6 a.m., the sun just coming up. All right, guys, we're going to do roll call. And these undercover agents reporting for duty in a parking lot in Los Angeles. We have FDA, FBI. On this day, hunting for fake medicine used by everyday Americans. In this case, medicine to fight arthritis. And what it is is an injectable liquid vial. And authorities say in some cases there's something else. The offer of someone who will act as a nurse. Not only they sell the product, but if you give them extra money, they'll inject it for you. We're not talking about street drugs like heroin or cocaine. These are everyday prescription drugs in your medicine cabinet. Worst case scenario, allergic reactions and even deaths. You have seen deaths? Yes. They map out the raid. First stop, an apartment complex, where inside they think they're going to find counterfeit medicine or pills that came from factories not approved by the FDA. Medicine most of us buy at the pharmacy. You got everybody on trail. They arrive. The alleged dealers have no idea. We follow them down the sidewalk, up the stairs, helmets on, guns drawn, unaware what they'll find. And out comes a surprise. Two middle-aged women, one smiling, and this man, his hands behind his back. And we notice something. They're not young guns out there on the streets, but authorities say that's what makes them believable, trustworthy for people who are looking for cheaper drugs. And what do they find inside that Los Angeles apartment? When we start pulling these boxes out, it's just a tremendous amount of counterfeit and illicit um, pharmaceutical drugs. Boxes of pain pills, vitamins, antibiotics that you need a prescription for in this country. And authorities point to how they hide them. It hit us the moment they opened the door. We could smell the fish. People are going to look at that and say, wrapped in fish? Why on earth? But that's that's a stealth way of doing this, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, the minute uh, we open the door, the stench of uh, fish. And that's basically to conceal the medicine. Oh. We could hear the investigator groan, overcome by the smell, the packaging. Is that common, that they all come up with ways to get this medicine into the United States? Absolutely, because the profit margin is huge. Any law enforcement officer opens up a bag and it smells like, oh my God, a fish? They're not going to look any further. Unless it's you. <laughs> the suspects arrested, about to be put into unmarked cars. Authorities say this woman claimed to be a former doctor from El Salvador. Tonight, police say her charges are pending. Does she have a license here in the United States? She does not. You can post up here, you can Across town, here. they're about to pound out another door. They get their guns a battering ram, they bang on the door. And this is who comes out. And authorities say her husband, then slowly coming down those stairs. And again, if they don't look like the usual suspects, just look at what comes out next. Boxes of illegal and counterfeit medicine, suspected counterfeit prescription drugs, vitamin shots for B12 deficiency, and teramycin, an antibiotic for eye infections, ampicillin for ear infections, amoxicillin for strep throat. This is how she's out there bending it on the streets. And, and as our cameras roll, authorities point to this, what they call her mobile pharmacy, a cart with drugs they believe were shipped into this country. Investigators say they can fetch thousands on a good week. 
She's under arrest and her charges are pending. Now the team working at lightning speed. Can you please show me code six, that 746 Alvarado, please? And it's not just apartments and little mobile carts. The next raid, we're with the team as they race into a retail store to find what's hidden in the back. Right here. Oh, sorry, come over here a second. Because inside the store where we see clothes on mannequins, they quickly spot something else. And there's evidence like insulin or syringes up there. Right underneath that wig, investigators say, look, a box of insulin syringes. And out back behind the store, up these stairs, enough drugs, enough medicine, they say to stock a pharmacy. Just listen to this undercover investigator who asks us to blur his face. We have no idea what's in them. People injecting each other with these drugs. Next up, this flea market. They demand this woman pull up the metal door. There's a fireman, there's a We're with investigator Brian Wong with the L.A. Sheriff's Department. He is also a trained pharmacist. It's actually for uh, pain, and these are tablets that, that we've been told is actually counterfeit. So if you look at the bottle, the label itself, you can tell it's actually been counterfeited. The, the labels were, were printed with an inkjet printer. Soon, on the move again. We have a possible target. And just watch. Here's one of the ways they catch their suspects. That's an undercover agent right there in the red and white shirt asking where can she find inexpensive medicine. She is told to go into a market. She'll find a man sitting in the back, which is exactly where we go next, following the investigators. And there he is, sitting right there. They ask for amoxicillin. Amoxicillin? Illegally sold. And just listen to this investigator straight from American pharmaceutical giant Merck, looking at a product they claimed was made by his company. Jeez. This is a counterfeit. We don't actually make anything that looks like this. And we see the ledger book. Authorities see many of these drugs counterfeits. And just look, all of that is cash changing hands. The man in the back now in handcuffs. And not far away, this pharmacy in downtown Los Angeles, allegedly selling antibiotics even if you show up without a prescription. As she's handcuffed, investigators discover in a building around the corner through the lobby, a janitor's closet full of counterfeit and illicit drugs. As this plays out, our cameras also in Compton, California. So we go in at level 10, ready? They put on their belts, their tactical gear, up the stairs. And while we're there, a customer shows up. Um, you sure you want to show me what you got in there? For arthritis. For arthritis? Yes. Okay. All right. I usually give her two dollars. Okay, well, you got to make sure what you're ingesting, ma'am, okay? And our team rolling as they discover something else. Investigators say they were selling this arthritis rub for pets. They say the problem is they were selling it for human use. It's made by Pfizer in, in Mexico for and, veterinarian use only. And what are they selling it for? They're selling this to people? On people. We have no idea of knowing what people are putting in their bodies. And one more stop. We never know what's going on. Keep your gear on. An outdoor market. Investigators prepare us. They tell us we will likely hear the whistles. Vendors signaling each other that the cops have arrived. And just listen moments after we get there. There are the whistles and the medicine baking in 100 degree temperatures. Prescription pill bottles, heart drugs, injectables, even painkillers, including morphine. And just look at the infant cough syrup we found. This woman arrested and taken away. And we ask, where is all of this evidence, all of this counterfeit medicine coming into this country illegally being taken? They show us the secret vaults, where eventually, they say, the medicine is destroyed. And while we're there, look at this. Investigators say the suspects using their own tools to stamp in the Pfizer name. These pill pressers, that, that's the Pfizer logo, where they were actually manufacturing Viagra. They send those pills to Pfizer to test them. And just listen to what they found in counterfeit Viagra. They're actually using, like, drywall as filler. Counterfeit Viagra with drywall inside. When we come back, David, you want to come over here? Sir. We were not expecting this. Our camera's rolling. You'll see the confrontation. Customers saying the medicine made them sick. Also, the counterfeit airbags. The family stunned by our test. The smartphones. Is yours a fake? And the cosmetics. What's really in that so-called MAC makeup? What are you truly putting on your face? I'm with 2020 and we're rolling right now. Twenty twenty continues with David Muir. Tonight, the counterfeit goods in every corner of your home, the smartphones, the bike helmets, the toothpaste, the makeup, and the suburban family about to be stunned by their airbag and our test. We're about to uncover it all. So we go into level ten. Do you have any weapons on you? Nine months after we first began our investigation, twenty twenty is back in Los Angeles. We wanted to know are those alleged counterfeit dealers first arrested as our cameras were rolling, already back on the streets. Just listen to the lead investigator describe who they're after now. She has a push cart and she's uh, sold counterfeit uh, pharmaceutical drugs. A push cart, a tiny little mobile pharmacy. Sound familiar? She's uh, wearing a red and gray striped shirt with a gray sweatpants. So she's right outside the market. That's her little van right there. Where did she get her hands on it? Normally like El Salvador, Guatemala. And is any route like that legal in the United States? No. 
and soon we're off. Several cars, one undercover agent will make the buy. She's right there. Yep. We park about 100 feet away. An investigator tells us the woman went to restock. We wait. Roger. I should see her any second now. Okay, she's right in front of us. She is <laughs> pushing two boxes, uh, fruit boxes. And look at this tonight. They gave 2020 the undercover video from the LAPD, showing the moment they say the undercover agent buys suspected counterfeit antibiotics from that woman on the street. The buy's been made. Let's do it. We head in. Across the parking lot. Four out of 20. Can you please show me code six? She's gone. Actually going northbound on Canmore. Must stay her. Yeah, she's with me. Investigators say she was trying to slip away to her apartment not far away. They explained to her that um, we just saw her go back over there into the courtyard, into the back of the storage unit. I saw you. You have cameras. Investigators say they find the bag, the medicine that they believe she wheeled right in front of us, a blue bag full of prescription drugs. Most of it, they believe, is counterfeit medication. What is this? Teromycin ophthalmic ointment. It says Pfizer. Right, exactly. So usually they, this comes from Central America that they, they import up here. So this is not an approved Pfizer manufactured drug here in America? Exactly. Is the medicine is de El Salvador? Yeah. It's legal? In los Estados Unidos? No sé. Tu no sabes. And you don't know exactly what, what kind of standards they've done to, to actually make this or manufacture this in, in, down in, in Central America. And yet people are buying it on the street for how much? This is going for about like $40, $50. And he so shows us the potential danger. Break away from you. And you see how it breaks. It's not even. And shards of glass can always get inside. We're not even quite sure if this is really a true, true manufacture of medications. And so this is a prescription anti-inflammatory you'd buy for arthritis. Correct. You can just get this, walk right around the corner and inject yourself. I ask her, is she worried at all about her customers? Tu estás preocupada para sus clientes? No. No? I ask, are you worried about the medicine? Tu estás preocupada sobre esta medicina? Silence. And if you're feeling at all badly for her, investigators say she's likely part of something much larger. They believe foreign counterfeiters are supplying her. And I ask, how much money does she make in a week? ¿Cuánto dinero en una semana para ti, para esta medicina? Uno, ochocientos, seiscientos, dólares. She said 800 a week. That's a lie. That's a lie. How much do you think? Easy over a thousand a week. No problem. No problem at all. It's more than most Americans make. Suddenly, we notice two men approaching. Yeah. David, you want to come over here? Sure. Two men who have purchased medicine here before are now back, angry over what they say it did to them. And so it's Domingo? He shows us where he had the pain after taking medication. Uh, ABC? You can hear them saying it's ABC. He pulls his shirt down. It's ABC. I don't want to be on the ABC. But we tell him we're there to uncover the possible dangers of counterfeit medicine. He decides to keep talking. Yeah, I got some injection from here uh, for a uh, brain. You know, it's... It was inspired. He says his friend got an infection. An infection? Después de la medicina? We asked this man who told us to yes. blur his face what kind of medicine he took. What type of injection? Yeah. Vitamin shot. And we asked the obvious question. Why buy drugs on the street? They're made from uh, Merrick. It's a known company, Merrick. Merck. And we tell one of the investigators, the pharmacist, that he thought the medicine was from Merck. You heard him tell right. us that, that the drug was from Merck. Right. That's how he knew it was okay. And it's not. It's not the Merck that you're thinking was counterfeit. Investigators are now checking out a garage behind the grocery store. You can see you know, children on the street watching all of this unfold. But right over my shoulder is the supermarket here in this central Los Angeles neighborhood. And they're convinced that back here in one of these garages, she has essentially a supply of this medicine that she's selling on the streets. Go ahead, open it. What is this? Más medicina? ¿De dónde? De Salvador. ¿Y qué tipo de medicina es eso? Antibiotics. Antibiotics? Pero es legal en los Estados Unidos? Okay. Es ilegal. So I ask, why sell in the streets? Porque en las calles de Los Angeles. She has no answer. Then there's the heat. Well into the 90s on the day we were there. She thinks it's okay in the heat. ¿Crees que está bien en que que está bien el calor así como está? No. No. Yeah, she says it's hot. What temperature should this be stored at? It's got to be somewhere between 60 and 75 degrees. If there is antibiotic inside, you may not be getting anything in there because it's all all been denatured by the sun. Essentially baked out of it. Right. And along with all of that medicine, the cash. This is just from today. Um, I mean, that's a lot for two hours of work. Customers drawn to her because much of the medicine is inexpensive. A lot of people are going to look at her and say, I mean, do you feel sorry for her? You know, I, I totally understand what people think and perception, but because she's older, a lot of these folks out here feel safe to approach her and to so buy these. It's a trust thing. It's a trust, absolutely. When we come back tonight, our producers out all across America with prescriptions from their own doctors, those storefronts promising cheaper medicine with Canada in the name. 
but did any of the drugs we ordered actually come from Canada? And once they arrived, would they pass the test? And later tonight, the counterfeit goods in every corner of your home, the toothpaste. Had antifreeze. The airbag we put to the test. Wow. And the makeup. What are you really putting on your face? Tonight, 2020, and our team of producers out all over America. All right, we're good to go. Each with prescriptions in hand for real medications, prescriptions from their own doctors. And like so many of you at home, the idea of finding a cheaper place to get those drugs is intriguing. So many small storefronts advertising drugs from Canada. But we wondered, are all of those drugs really coming from right over the border? Is this Canada drugs? Oh, yes. And once you get them, can they guarantee that all of those medicines are pure? with the same ingredients you would get here. From Florida to Kansas to Michigan, we're getting answers. Because Americans have long read the headlines that drugs from Canada are cheaper. We're in Overland Park, Kansas, a stretch of road like so many across this country. In Olive Garden, Sears, and nestled among this cluster of offices, we see the sign, Canada Direct Drugs. Inside, our producer simply wants to know how it all works. This friendly woman behind her desk, those paneled walls, there are no shelves with drugs, no pharmacist, just a computer, her smile, ready to fill out the prescription for Viagra. We listen to her pitch. It has to go through a pharmacist just like it does here. Okay. So they look at your medical history, make sure nothing's going to counteract yeah. with anything else. So. And our producer asks, where do we pick up the drugs? This does take two to four weeks. Okay, you can deliver it though, right? It'll go to your house. Right. It can't come here. It can't come here, she says. And we ask. Where is the medication coming from? From Canada? This one's coming from Singapore. Okay. But from Pfizer as a manufacturer. She assures us our prescription will be pharmacist approved. Some pharmacist in Canada has got to approve? Uh-huh. Okay, all right. Yeah. They're the ones that monitor all the pharmacists. All right. And you'll call me, you'll call country. me if that's if there's a problem or anything. Yeah, or... they'll call me and then I'll call you all right, right away. Now it's time to pay and our producer asks, cash, credit card? Unfortunately for new, they no longer take credit cards for new patients. Okay. It, it all me. changed. The credit card companies are cracking down on any kind of pharmacy that is doing shipping in. It's just ridiculous. He's told to pay by check. We're also in Wichita, Kansas. Just past the JCPenney, the Sears, the Red Lobster, this building. It houses a law office, a wellness center, and we look for an office we found listed online called Canada Drug. Is there a Canada Drug store here? Hi, Good to see you. Our producer met by this employee and led to another room. What are you guys using? An FDA monitored manufacturing sites. Our producer is getting a prescription filled for Zocor, a cholesterol reducing drug. Do you care whether it comes from Canada or over in Europe? Whereabouts in Europe? Um, it just says it's a product of the European Union. It's shipped out of the UK. If it is, is it the same drug? It's brand name, so it's so, still made by Merck. I don't care. I, I don't. Wherever it's cheapest. He places the order. And our team on the move again, this time in Ocala, Florida. We drive past this CVS, and about 50 yards away, this building, housing a CPA and accountant. And on the door, the sign, Canadian Meds. As we enter the bookshelves, the framed CPA's license hanging on the wall. And our producer brings a prescription for Cialis. He places the order. They tell him it's going to be the cheaper, generic version of Cialis. And they offer more of the drug than his prescription asked for. My prescription was only for three pills, a trial pack. And they weren't able to do that, so she actually changed my prescription so that she could order me more pills. And again, in this case, he says she vouched for the medication and reminded him this route is far cheaper. She said it's completely legitimate, it is full-on safe for you, and it's just 70 to 80 percent cheaper. And one more stop in Bellevue, Florida. We pass by one of the largest senior living communities in the country. Another strip mall, another big sign for everyone to see, touting that Canada connection. Inside, the owner fills our producer's prescription for Propecia hair loss. From behind his desk, images of Abe Lincoln, John Denver, James Dean hovering above. He said that he'd been doing it for years and had medication shipped all across the country. They, too, changed the quantity on the prescription. Instead of 30 pills with an option to refill, they ordered him 100 pills of a generic right there on the spot. Remember, all legitimate prescriptions from our producer's own doctors. Prescriptions filled at storefronts or offices, all with Canada in the name. What percentage of the drugs you're getting through those storefronts are actually from Canada? A very small percentage. The odds are it isn't. And the odds are that all the protections that FDA and our regulations give you do not apply. Howard Sklamberg is with the FDA's Global Regulatory Operations. He's also a former federal prosecutor. They could have dangerous contaminants. 
And that's just a really, really, really big risk to take with your health. And federal authorities point to these images tonight. Counterfeit drugs coming from unsanitary manufacturing conditions. Look at these fake antibiotics being pumped out by this filthy pill press in Colombia. Interpol agents raiding this fake Viagra manufacturer in Peru. And look at this cement mixer in China. Authorities say it was used to grind and mix counterfeit antibiotics. But where would our drugs come from? The medicine starts arriving in the mail. Remember, we ordered Viagra, Zocor for cholesterol, a generic form of Cialis, and a generic of Propecia for hair loss. We sent all four to be tested. Our camera's rolling right there in the lab. Mike Dalton works for drug giant Eli Lilly's global protection team. It's our job to uh, test the product, the packaging, and determine if it's authentic or counterfeit. Our first drug, the generic Cialis, that we ordered back at that accountant's office, where they changed the number of pills on the prescription. When the package arrived, we got a generic drug from India that authorities tell us is not even approved here in the U.S. We have enough information here to, to conclude that this would be a counterfeit tablet. Their testing device shows it fails. And what exactly would they find inside? Dalton comes from the lab with the charts. These are the test results right here. That's correct. So you can see a hint of blue going across and then the giant chumps of red. Correct. That red is evidence of the impurities. Correct. And what does that tell you? It could be potentially dangerous and, and harmful. So whoever bought this and is ingesting it has no idea what they're really ingesting. That is correct. Next up, the Zocor, the cholesterol drug we ordered in Wichita, Kansas. Wherever it's cheapest. When the medicine arrived again, it didn't come from Canada. This one came from Spain, shipped through the UK. Had a long trip to get here. It did. And this is for cholesterol, your heart health. Correct. Next up, the prescription for hair loss, the generic Propecia. The drug our producer received, again, was not from Canada. It was a generic from India. And again, the medicine received is a drug not even approved in the United States. And the Red X, it fails. Yeah, it's not matching. The chemical test on the drug reveals an unknown ingredient, unknown properties, mixed in with the active one. That's the telltale sign right there? Yes, that's an indication that this product was manufactured with some component um, that was not consistent with the authentic material. And the last drug we ordered, the Viagra. Made in Turkey, the instructions in Turkish, not from Canada. Authorities say illegally sent from Singapore. The FDA telling us tonight, after a route like that, they cannot vouch for the authenticity of the drug. When we come back, we return to those storefronts with Canada in the name. I don't know. How do they explain none of the drugs even came from Canada? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm done talking to you. And how do they explain some of those unknown ingredients? Yeah. And later here, inside the secret facilities that catch counterfeiters in the act, trying to dupe American families. The toothpaste with antifreeze, the fake Beats headphones, your child's safety helmet failing the test. When we come back. Twenty twenty producers out across America with prescriptions from their own doctors. Can you fill this with the Zocor? Okay. Visiting storefronts with Canada in the name. Brand name Zocor, okay. twenty milligrams out of the UK. Wanting to know where those drugs come from and when they arrive, if they have the ingredients they're supposed to have. Armed with the results, not one drug from Canada, all unapproved by the FDA. We go back. Ready? Let's do it. First stop, Wichita, Kansas. You'll remember our producer Hi. ordering the heart drug Zocor. Hi, Good to see you. From this woman. What do you guys use? An FDA monitored manufacturing sites. But remember, when that drug arrived, we saw that it came from a factory in Spain. Not approved by the FDA, the packaging itself in Spanish. It was shipped out of the UK. Is this legal? No. But more importantly, um, what often happens in a situation like that, so there's a drug from Spain. How is it stored? Was it sitting in a warehouse at 120 degrees? What did that do to the drug? Um, that drug may have become dangerous or it may become, have become ineffective. We're from uh, ABC News 2020. We're hoping to speak Canada Drug. It's about a medicine that we ordered. From 2020? You're the building manager? Uh -huh. We're here to talk to people at Canada Drug about a medicine that they place for us. I'll check with them. Okay. He comes back telling us the woman we need to see is on her phone. I'm waiting for her to get off the cell phone. She never did. We called back and here's what the owner told 2020. We placed the order with our RX connection in Canada, and we've been doing business with them for 10 years, and we have never had that kind of a problem. Next up, Overland Park, Kansas. Is this Canada Drugs? Where we brought that doctor's okay, prescription good. for Viagra. You'll remember this woman. It'll go to your house. Right. You can't come here. Okay, good. It arrived at his home, the medicine from a factory in Turkey. The instructions in Turkish, mailed through Singapore. It was in Turkish. It arrived through Singapore. Right. Uh, does that sound legal to you? Uh, that does not sound legal to me. But even more importantly, it sounds potentially dangerous. So we went to find a woman who ordered it for us. We're from ABC News 2020. We were hoping to speak to someone about a drug that we ordered here, prescription drug. This was ordered in January from you guys. I don't know what you're talking about. 
Well, we actually ordered it from you. Uh, he did in January. Hi. It was a, a Viagra from Singapore. Michael. Are you the owner of this store, sir? No, I'm not. Are, are you, sir? Can I help you? Yeah, we're from ABC News 2020. We want to Again, we tell him we brought our prescription here. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. You guys walked in. I don't know what you're talking about, but if you want to send me a question or fax it, that'd be fine. And so we did. We have not heard back. And next, Bellevue, Florida, to Canadian Discount RX. Remember, our producer had a prescription for Propecia for hair loss. 30 pills with refills. Instead, he was given an order for 100 pills right on the spot. When it arrived, it was not Propecia, but a generic from India. A drug not approved in the United States. You can't sell it here. And in the lab, that X, showing it fails the Propecia test. They say it has the active ingredient, but it also has unknowns, impurities. Right. Would you want to put unknowns in your body? So there's nothing legal about this. Correct. And so we go back. We're from ABC News 2020. I want to talk to you about a prescription medicine that was ordered here. Okay, what about it? Do you guys have a pharmacy license here? No. Do you know that this was an illegally sent medicine into the United States? Who said that? Uh, the FDA says it. And we also had it tested. It found that it had impurities in it. We've never had that happen before. All the while, customers waiting, standing right there as we ask how all this works. And we ask him about changing the prescription. Remember, he ordered 100 pills right away instead of 30 with refills as the doctor had ordered. You actually sent 100 and his... Person. That's what the manufacturer sent? Well, have you got a law, uh, license to be in here? No, we'll leave if you want us to leave, sir. Okay, then get out. Okay, we're leaving. And so we leave. Next up, Ocala, Florida. That CPA office where we brought a doctor's prescription for Cialis. They ordered us a generic. It was made in India, sent from Singapore, a stop in Switzerland. Never Canada. And the lab tests showed us this. So on here it comes back with a fail. An unknown substance in the pill. The FDA has not approved this drug in the United States. All right, here's the CPA office and Canada Meds. We're from ABC News 2020. She nods her head and then the CPA walks out of her office, not far from where they filled out our producer's prescription. We would like to speak to you about a medicine that we ordered here. I'm sorry, I don't have anything to do with it. Even though it was just four months ago we were getting our prescription filled right here, she tells us this. I'm sorry, but this is a CPA firm, and so you're speaking to the wrong person. She sends us elsewhere for answers to an office 15 minutes away. We're from uh, ABC News 2020. The Canadian flag hanging right there, and the owner is waiting. I got some lines I can read you, but um, you're not welcome in my store. Okay, so we can leave, but if you want to give us a statement, yeah. that'd be fine. Americans are allowed under federal law to order up to a 90-day supply of non-controlled medications. So you heard what he said. He said Americans are allowed under federal law to order up to a 90-day supply of non-controlled medications. That, that is not correct. In fact, he tells us tonight the FDA allows for a very rare exception when someone has a serious health condition for which there is no treatment here in the U.S. Americans are allowed to order whatever they want on the Internet. When we come back inside the secret facilities tonight, the fake smartphones were right there as they peel back the truth. The 2020 airbag test and what was sold as Mac makeup, what the lab test revealed. Twenty Twenty continues with David Muir. Tonight, 2020 takes you to one of several secret locations all over this country. Last year, over 23,000 seizures where boxes they deem suspicious are pulled off planes, trains, cargo ships, and brought here where Customs and Border Protection agents are ready. 2020 is allowed in. David, it's it's right. Inside this building in Newark, New Jersey, 30 minutes outside New York City, we see them. We're about to fly you right over the mountain of boxes, stacked four, five boxes high. Inside, investigators say countless counterfeits. Director, as I stand here, I mean, look at the boxes. I mean, it almost seems overwhelming. Well over 25 million every year. But right here tonight, you're about to see the tricks revealed. Car parts, smartphones, your clothing, right down to the real ingredients in that counterfeit makeup. Many of these products end up in medicine cabinets in homes across America. Exactly right, David. This looks exactly like the, the crest you'd get at the supermarket. At a glance, it, it looks like the real thing, but it is counterfeit. We have found trace quantities of antifreeze. Where is this toothpaste coming from? China. And there's money on American products going straight to the Chinese. Exactly right. And tonight, the number one piece of advice, they say if you're buying toothpaste or another product at a deep, deep discount, you should always beware. Then he shows us the Made in America jeans. So these are supposed to be true religion? Yes. These are the real thing? No, these are not. Neither these one of them are. Not, no, see, this one fooled not. me. You can see the label here says made in the USA, and yet these were shipped into the port here in Newark. From China. And look at the trick revealed with these boots. Nondescript, generic brand, mega gear. But we noticed something. On the sole of the boot, a rubber piece added to hide something. This one piece affixed right here. But if you peel that away, you'll see that it has the Timberland 
brand underneath. They were just hoping to get it here, rip off that piece of rubber, and sell it as the real thing. So once they arrive at the store, they can take this off? Exactly. And sell it as a Timberland boot. The agents going box by box. They allow us to start opening too. I mean, this is hours of them opening boxes here. It is. And you don't know what chemicals have been used in the making of this product. Exactly. Meantime tonight, 1,200 miles away in a building in Miami, they're ripping through boxes too. And they notice something. It's empty? Yeah, it's empty. Boxes for car parts shipped with nothing in them. And that's the point. Oh. This is a trip box. Yeah? Sometimes they'll do that and then send the actual pieces separate. And another trick revealed as our cameras roll. Look at the smartphones, the fake trademark they were hoping to hide from Border Patrol. So I'm going to go ahead and peel it off. And that's the brand name they're trying to hide. Underneath the black tape, authorities say the fake Samsung trademark. And where do these knockoffs end up? Investigators say stores like the one they're about to bust as our cameras roll. All right, guys. Homeland Security agents on the move. We're in New York City's Little Italy neighborhood. Right away, investigators say counterfeit Ugg boots and a secret room hidden by scarves filled with counterfeit Michael Kors and Tory Burch bags. The more expensive fakes, where you might least expect them, the bathroom, the fake Chanel bags hanging right over the toilet. And when the counterfeit bags come in, investigators say the counterfeit logo isn't even on them. They snap it on and make the sale. Chanel, they just pop off the, the little, little metal thing on some of these handbags and then just makes them counterfeit. In Los Angeles, a patch sewn on to fool the border agents. They were hiding a trademark North Face mark. A Louis Vuitton bag wrapped in a disguise. And another trick. It looks like a, a no-name brand headphone. Watch as he pulls the box of fake Beats headphones right out of the other box. But handbags and headphones are one thing, helmets are another. Putting your family at risk. Watch as they put the counterfeit helmet to the test. It was cleaved into two pieces, which is a failure for the test. The real helmet is not supposed to slice in half. The real specialized helmet on the inside has this. It's really strong. And perhaps more alarming than the bike helmet, What's going into your family car? Hi, David. With the Larsons from Folsom, California. I'm Bob. This is my wife, Tammy. The Larsons reaching out to 2020. Standing in front of their used car, they bought it knowing they needed to replace the airbag. But what they didn't know was that the airbag they bought online was from this guy, the man who owned this home in Indian Trail, North Carolina, who tonight is behind bars. The man accused of selling fake car parts. Look at what investigators say they found in Igor Borden's home. More than 1,500 fake airbags, $60,000 in cash hidden in the walls. Authorities say he sold $1.7 million worth on eBay, calling himself Airbag Pros, labeled a top-rated seller. eBay telling us tonight they have since tightened their selling policies. We found later the guy who had sold us his driver's side airbag had uh, sold us a bum bag. We offered to tow the Larson's car to an authorized dealer to have their airbag replaced with an authorized Honda replacement. And we were about to test the airbag they've been riding around with. First, they set off a real airbag. And now, the airbag that was in the Larson's car. Two, one. Oh, wow! Shrapnel. Well, it's a lot of shrapnel. You would have had a face full of plastic. We have a piece of the airbag cover over here. This is probably about 40 feet from the actual explosion of the airbag. Could you imagine this being in the driver's face of a car? And one last danger tonight, perhaps already on your face. One we've been following for months now. Our team first heading to this discount store, not unlike so many across America. This one, right in the heart of New York City, out to buy MAC Cosmetics. You guys have good stuff. And we take it to the lab. The 2020 test, comparing it to the real thing. Dr. Whitney Bow, a dermatologist waiting inside, about to take us through the results. So this is the MAC that we tested. Exactly. What did you find? We start with the lead. So the lead was at least five times higher than what you should be allowed. It was an order of magnitude higher than where we should be. And then the copper. And think about this number, the FDA limit on copper, 100 parts per million. In the makeup tested, more than 2,000 parts per million. So in this test, there's so much copper that there's no question in your mind there's copper flowing through the bloodstream if you use this product. There is free copper flowing through the bloodstream, hurting kidneys and hurting the liver. But the most frightening discovery in that makeup was the beryllium, a category one carcinogen. Beryllium can be a cancer causer. Beryllium is a known carcinogen. So we go back to where we bought it. Armed with the results of that makeup test, we're back at that New York City store where one of our producers bought the makeup. I'm with 2020 and we're rolling right now. Our producer remembers this woman selling the makeup. Is this supposed to be real? I don't know. We asked her, does she remember selling the so-called MAC product to us? You guys have good stuff. Do you remember working with her? I don't know. Do you remember her face? I bought this from you, remember? And how does she explain the test results? It's lead, copper, beryllium. 
Th these are cancer-causing agents. And we revealed to her what Estee Lauder, the maker of MAC, told us about this counterfeit product. MAC told us this is not the real thing. They told us they've never even sold eyeshadow in a box like this. I don't know. I don't have any idea. Can you see the paper? Oh, yeah. When you see these test results, do you feel badly? Yes, of course. You feel badly about mm -hmm. it? Yeah, of course. And tonight, months after that moment, after that worker told us she felt bad, we go back to see if there are any MAC cosmetics on those shelves. The same saleswoman talking to our producer. Do you have any brand names, anything? No brand names, Nothing. no counterfeit MAC no. cosmetics. One small victory for the army of counterfeit investigators who work this every single day. But across the country tonight, back in Los Angeles, where we saw firsthand all of that prescription medication, counterfeit medicine sold in plain sight, we go back nine months after our first visit, back up those stairs, right up to that apartment door. Hi, how are you? Remember, this was where investigators made those arrests, saying they were hiding counterfeit medication in the fish. And I begin by asking, do they have any medicine? Medicina? I know. No mas? Yeah, no. They tell us, no medicine here. I then point to all of the fish, boxes and boxes of it. Pero los peces? No, 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 medicine in la fish? No. No, mijo. No, my son, she says. Okay, no, no, and while they tell us there's no medicine, we are overwhelmed again by the smell of fish. Oh, it tastes all sense? Yeah, you can smell it. Right, right. Um, and investigators perhaps overwhelmed by the thought that their work is hardly over. It was an incredibly eye-opening hour tonight, and we want everyone to know at home we have tips on how to catch a fake, how to protect your family. And about those dangerous counterfeit prescriptions, we have a link to the FDA's own site listing approved pharmacies. It's at our website, abcnews.com. Just click on 2020. I'm David Newell. And I'm Elizabeth Vargas. For all of us at 2020, thanks so much for watching. Have a great night and a great weekend. You're about to hit the streets. Four out of 20 to control. Elite teams able to see something we cannot. She's right outside the market. Both six at seven, four, six. Spotting counterfeits, the fakes on street corners behind closed doors in shopping malls across America. Do you have any weapons on you? Everything from prescription pills in your medicine cabinet. And you don't even know for sure if the ingredients in there. And our lab tests right here tonight. What's really in those pills when the test fails? So this is not an approved drug here in America. Exactly. To some of those pharmacies with Canada in the name, promising to save you money, we go undercover. Do any of the drugs we order actually come from Canada? Is there a Canada drug store here? Yes. To the genes that say made in America. From China. To the cosmetics, what's really in that makeup? What are you truly putting on your face? I'm with 2020 and we're rolling right now. Everyone in the family, the stunning ingredients inside counterfeit Viagra. They're actually using like drywall as filler. To your children, the bike helmet sliced in half, failing the test. To the airbags in the family car. One couple stunned when we put theirs to the test. For nearly a year now, 2020, behind the scenes with the LAPD, the FBI, the LA Sheriff's Department. LA County Sheriff's Report. Homeland Security, Customs and Border Protection, 24 cities, three continents, every corner of America. And we were stunned by what we found. You could be brushing your teeth with trace amounts of antifreeze. Exactly. Right. Good evening. Yes, antifreeze found in that toothpaste. And tonight here, you're about to see it all. The secret facility right here behind us, those counterfeit airbags and cars, one family stunned by the 2020 test. The so-called Mac makeup, what was really in it? Your children, the bike helmets, the stunning test, and even your smartphones, are they the real thing? David, you spent nearly a year investigating dangerous counterfeits in every corner of your home, even your medicine cabinet. So many of us in search of cheaper medicine. Those signs for Canada drugs, are they really from Canada? And what are the real ingredients? And so tonight, it all unravels right before your eyes, starting with everyday prescription medications, dangerous and counterfeit, and hiding in plain sight. On this morning, 6 a.m., the sun just coming up. All right, guys, we're going to do roll call. And these undercover agents reporting for duty in a parking lot in Los Angeles. We have FDA, FBI. On this day, hunting for fake medicine used by everyday Americans, in this case, medicine to fight arthritis. And what it is is an injectable liquid vial. And authorities say in some cases there's something else, the offer of someone who will act as a nurse. Not only they sell the product, but if you give them extra money, they'll inject it for you. We're not talking about street drugs like heroin or cocaine. These are everyday prescription drugs in your medicine cabinet. 
Worst case scenario. Allergic reactions and even deaths. You have seen deaths? Yes. They map out the raid. First stop, an apartment complex, where inside they think they're going to find counterfeit medicine or pills that came from factories not approved by the FDA. Medicine most of us buy at the pharmacy. You got everybody on trail. They arrive. The alleged dealers have no idea. We follow them down the sidewalk, up the stairs, helmets on, guns drawn, unaware what they'll find. And out comes a surprise. Two middle-aged women, one smiling, and this man, his hands behind his back. And we notice something. They're not young guns out there on the streets, but authorities say that's what makes them believable, trustworthy for people who are looking for cheaper drugs. And what do they find inside that Los Angeles apartment? When we start pulling these boxes out, it's just a tremendous amount of counterfeit and illicit um, pharmaceutical drugs. Boxes of pain pills, vitamins, antibiotics that you need a prescription for in this country. And authorities point to how they hide them. It hit us the moment they opened the door. We could smell the fish. People are going to look at that and say, wrap in fish? Why on earth? But that's that's a stealth way of doing this, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, the minute uh, we open the door, the stench of uh, fish. And that's basically to conceal the medicine. Oh. We could hear the investigator groan, overcome by the smell, the packaging. Is that common, that they all come up with ways to get this medicine into the United States? Absolutely, because the profit margin is huge. Any law enforcement officer opens up a bag and it smells like, oh my God, a fish? They're not going to look any further. Unless it's you. <laughs> the suspects arrested, about to be put into unmarked cars. Authorities say this woman claimed to be a former doctor from El Salvador. Tonight, police say her charges are pending. Does she have a license here in the United States? She does not. You can post up here, you can Across walk town, here. they're about to pound on another door. They get their guns a battering ram, they bang on the door. And this is who comes out. And authorities say her husband, then slowly coming down those stairs. And again, if they don't look like the usual suspects, just look at what comes out next. Boxes of illegal and counterfeit medicine, suspected counterfeit prescription drugs, vitamin shots for B12 deficiency, and teramycin, an antibiotic for eye infections, ampicillin for ear infections, amoxicillin for strep throat. This is how she's out there bending it on the streets. And, and as our cameras roll, authorities point to this, what they call her mobile pharmacy, a cart with drugs they believe were shipped into this country. Investigators say they can fetch thousands on a good week. She's under arrest and her charges are pending. Now the team working at lightning speed. Can you please show me code six at 746 Alvarado, please? And it's not just apartments and little mobile carts. The next raid, we're with the team as they race into a retail store to find what's hidden in the back. Right here. Oh, sorry, come over here a second. Because inside the store where we see clothes on mannequins, they quickly spot something else. And there's evidence like insulin uh, syringes up there. Right underneath that wig, investigators say, look, a box of insulin syringes. And out back behind the store, up these stairs, enough drugs, enough medicine, they say to stock a pharmacy. Just listen to this undercover investigator who asks us to blur his face. We have no idea what's in them. People injecting each other with these drugs. Next up, this flea market. They demand this woman pull up the metal door. We're with investigator Brian Wong with the L.A. Sheriff's Department. He is also a trained pharmacist. Actually for uh, pain, and these are tablets that, that we've been told is actually counterfeit. So if you look at the bottle, the label itself, you can tell it's actually been counterfeited. The, the labels were, were printed with an inkjet printer. Soon, on the move again. We have a possible target. And just watch. Here's one of the ways they catch their suspects. That's an undercover agent right there in the red and white shirt asking where can she find inexpensive medicine. She is told to go into a market. She'll find a man sitting in the back, which is exactly where we go next, following the investigators. And there he is, sitting right there. They ask for amoxicillin. Amoxicillin? Illegally sold. Illegally sold. And just listen to this investigator straight from American pharmaceutical giant Merck, looking at a product they claimed was made by his company. Jeez. This is a counterfeit. We don't actually make anything that looks like this. And we see the ledger book. Authorities see many of these drugs counterfeits. And just look, all of that is cash changing hands. The man in the back, now in handcuffs. And not far away, this pharmacy in downtown Los Angeles, allegedly selling antibiotics even if you show up without a prescription. As she's handcuffed, investigators discover in a building around the corner through the lobby, a janitor's closet full of counterfeit and illicit drugs. As this plays out, our cameras also in Compton, California. So we go in at level 10, ready? They put on their belts, their tactical gear, up the stairs. And while we're there, a customer shows up. Uh, you sure you want to show me what you got in there? For arthritis. For arthritis? Yes. Okay. Right. I usually give her two dollars. Okay, well, you got to make sure what you're ingesting, ma'am, okay? And our team rolling as they discover something else. Investigators say they were selling this arthritis rub for pets. They say the problem is they were selling it for human use. It's made by Pfizer in, in Mexico for and, veterinarian use only. And what are they selling it for? 
They're selling this to people? On people. We have no idea of knowing what people are putting in their bodies. And one more stop. We never know what's going on. Keep your gear on. An outdoor market. Investigators prepare us. They tell us we will likely hear the whistles. Vendors signaling each other that the cops have arrived. Just listen moments after we get there. There are the whistles and the medicine baking in 100 degree temperatures. Prescription pill bottles, heart drugs, injectables, even painkillers including morphine. And just look at the infant cough syrup we found. This woman arrested and taken away. And we ask, where is all of this evidence, all of this counterfeit medicine coming into this country illegally being taken? They show us the secret vaults where eventually they say the medicine is destroyed. And while we're there, look at this. Investigators say the suspects using their own tools to stamp in the Pfizer name. These pill pressers, that, that's the Pfizer logo where they were actually manufacturing Viagra. They send those pills to Pfizer to test them. And just listen to what they found in counterfeit Viagra. They're actually using like drywall as filler. Counterfeit Viagra with drywall inside. When we come back, David, you want to come over here? Sir. We were not expecting this. Our camera's rolling. You'll see the confrontation. Customers saying the medicine made them sick. Also, the counterfeit airbags. The family stunned by our test. The smartphones. Is yours a fake? And the cosmetics. What's really in that so-called MAC makeup? What are you truly putting on your face? I'm with 2020 and we're rolling right now. Twenty twenty continues with David Muir. Tonight, the counterfeit goods in every corner of your home, the smartphones, the bike helmets, the toothpaste, the makeup, and the suburban family about to be stunned by their airbag and our test. We're about to uncover it all. So we go into level ten. Do you have any weapons on you? Nine months after we first began our investigation, 2020 is back in Los Angeles. We wanted to know are those alleged counterfeit dealers first arrested as our cameras were rolling, already back on the streets. Just listen to the lead investigator describe who they're after now. She has a push cart and she's uh, sold counterfeit uh, pharmaceutical drugs. A push cart, a tiny little mobile pharmacy. Sound familiar? She's uh, wearing a red and gray striped shirt with a gray sweatpants. So she's right outside the market. That's her little van right there. Where did she get her hands on it? Normally like El Salvador, Guatemala. And is any route like that legal in the United States? No. And soon we're off. Several cars, one undercover agent will make the buy. She's right there. Yep. We park about 100 feet away. An investigator tells us the woman went to restock. We wait. Roger, I should see her any second now. OK, she's right in front of us. She is. <laughs> pushing two boxes of fruit boxes and look at this tonight they gave 2020 the undercover video from the LAPD showing the moment they say the undercover agent buys suspected counterfeit antibiotics from that woman on the street the buy's been made let's do it we head in across the parking lot four out of 20 can you please show me cold sticks she's gone must stay her yeah she's with me investigators say she was trying to slip away to her apartment not far away they explained to her that um we just saw her go back over there into the courtyard, into the back of the storage unit. I saw you. You have cameras. Investigators say they find the bag, the medicine that they believe she wheeled right in front of us, a blue bag full of prescription drugs. Most of it, they believe, is counterfeit medication. What is this? Tyromycin, a 